Hello guys, welcome to my first Craft the World video in English here. What I am going to do in this video series is pretty much complete the campaign from the very start to the very end, starting with the first world, going to the second, the third, the fourth, and share all the crazy cool things about the game that I have uh, learned in uh, the process of playing it uh, for way too many hours on my own my Danish campaigns, all sorts of stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, make a new world. Okay, new campaign. And I'm just going to go with the default option. So this is also like if you're new to the game and you want a few pointers or you want to laugh at uh, <clears throat> some idiot playing the game, doing it horrible compared to how you want to do it this is an option for you as well so starting the world completely from scratch keeping the tutorial information i'm not going to move insanely fast but i am going to be explaining what i do why i do it and uh, that stuff in the process so congratulations we did it we opened an ancient portal to this new world great stuff we have a dwarf he's in a new world unfortunately we're, we currently only have enough power to send one dwarf this is the portal. Look around and start building your outpost. No one knows how dangerous it might be in this place. Open your journal and see the instructions we've prepared for you. Let's do that. Pay attention to your tasks. Complete them to earn rewards. So these are our missions, our tasks, and uh, we have four of them. Three shown here, one on the next page. Switch to the bestiary tab, please. Right, we'll do that instead of checking the new mission. We have it here. Here we can see the different... Uh, let's just read it. Here we will record all of the creatures you've met in this new world. Great stuff. Already met them. Let's go back to the tasks. See what we have. Complete the shelter. This is the most important mission. Dig a tunnel. Cut down a tree. And basic tool making. So complete the shelter is our base quest. This is where we are going to make a house for our dwarves where they can sleep, where they can eat and they can work on more advanced crafts in the future. It's a place where the dwarves need to be safe because they're gonna be baddies coming from monster portals and other things and they're going to come to try to take down our dwarves and uh, our shelter is going to be their sweet spot. So. <clears throat> That's pretty much it. Dig a tunnel. We need to dig three times. Cut down a tree. Cut down one tree. Basic tool making. We must craft enough weapons for a bar in our crafting area to go all the way. Then we have completed this and we get new technology. So that's uh, the start of the game. Great. Enough instruct instructions. Let's get started. Cut down a few trees to get some resources. Click the button of the nearest tree. So these are bushes, this is a tree, this is a small tree, it's going to grow higher. So I'm just going to click here and the dwarf is going to walk over there and start working. I'm going to speed up this game here by clicking here to double speed because most of this is like been there done that. Um, he's going to cut down this tree and complete our first mission. This is not really a good starting area but uh, I'm just going with it now. Great job. Now wait for the resources to be carried to the stockpile. And we complete the quest, got a little experience. Like that. I'm just going to... Okay, we now have enough resources to build some necessary tools. Please open the workshop dialog by pressing the craft button. This is the craft button right here. This is your workshop where you can craft various items and tools with the resources you have. Great. On the left you can see the resources in your stockpile. Let's craft some tools for your dwarves. Alrighty. But first let's craft a nice strong club. Switch to the armory tab. So this is the wood that we've gathered so far. And this is the armor. Click on the slot with the club. Scroll to see its recipe. Recipe, whatever it's called. There we have it. You need two pieces of wood to craft a club. Switch to the first resource tab where you can find the pieces of wood you need. So here we can see that we need two pieces of wood and we can see that we have enough to craft two of them. 
So we click here, drag pieces of wood from the stockpile slot to the slot on the crafting table. So we need to match these icons, like so. Alright, you now have all of the resources you need. Press the craft button, like so. We gain a level. Excellent, our power is growing. You've reached the next level and can now take in more settlers. So we're now going to grab, get another dwarf. We're just going to make another club while we're here. At last, later you can craft other tools and items. For now, let's equip somebody with this new club. That's a good idea now that we have it. So here's our level up thing. We're now getting a totem that we need to make our shelter. We're getting a new dwarf and a free club. Don't worry, we're gonna get the third dwarf in a second. So making that second one was not a waste. So here's going to come through the portal. Now we have to great stuff. So we have a new task, a new mission, new technology basic woodworking. Again, we need to craft enough items of a certain type in order to complete this quest. That is our new quest. So now we're going into the equip tag, drag the club to the weapon slot, ready. That's there. All right, now we can defend ourselves. We're going to skip here to the next dwarf that we have and just give that guy a club right away. So now it's uh, pretty much my time to tell these dwarves what to do. We're going to ask them to cut down everything in the neighborhood and um, that's because we're going to be needing a lot of resources for a great deal of things. Now I'm just marking the vegetation in the area to be cut down. Note this wheat here, we're going to be grabbing that later on. It has to um, be ripe for harvest first. So the next thing I'm going to do is click on this dwarf and say control. This dwarf is now under my command. So I can move around with him and I can dig with him. So we need to dig a tunnel, that was one of our quests, and we do need stone. Beware, these dangerous creatures live in tall trees. Your dwarves will attack enemies on their own. That is because a small creature came from that tree that attacked the dwarf. So, also clicking the background here, and this is important. It's very important to note that even though I remove this block here, there is still something in the background. And that is because Craft the World is a two-layered game. There is not only something in the background, there is also something in the foreground. <clears throat> the background needs to be there inside your house, and you can only build something when there is a background. So you always place the background first. When you need to make a wall so that opponents can't come into your house, you need to place a foreground wall. So you need to have two layers to make a wall, but only one layer if you just need a background. I'm going to take this background stone here even though I actually want to make a home here and that's because we need the stone uh, in order to make um, some of the tools that we're going to be making in a very short moment but before doing that just going to show you another little trick here great completed the collect stones quest that's also nice so we're going to go into our crafting area here and these are all the resources we have. We don't really have much to work with, but uh, we're going to get it because what we're going to do right now is we're going to grab some dirt here. And that is because dirt is completely useless to us, but we want it to fill in the blank spots here so that we can have a nice, that's a book that we can use to increase the carpenter skill. That's woodworking for any of our dwarves so that they can work more efficiently with, uh, with that stuff. So our other dwarf is carrying all these resources up to our stockpile where we can use them. The way this game works is that a dwarf can carry a thing from the stockpile to wherever he or she needs to use it um, and carry something back up to put it in. When you're controlling a dwarf like we are now, you have access to every resource in the stockpile instantly. You don't need to worry about uh, having to get it from the stockpile and going down with it. This is your guard power and it's very important because this is how you're going to really be gaining a lot of speed in, uh, in this game moving forward. So you have one character 
that you can really use to so now we're on the attack that's a zombie actually coming you can see our dwarf with this with the club here is going pretty well one on one with him but he's getting injured and uh, the only way that your dwarves can heal up in this game is by sleeping in a bed so we need to make sure that none of them really die so just uh, looked a little at that you can see a tree is starting to grow down here with roots in the soil and um, that's not something we want right here so now I have gathered the wood and the stone was what I wanted to say that is in this area so what I really wanted to show you guys is actually that if you go here into let's just release this guy you go into the craft area you can see all our resources and we can take this earth pull it down here we can take the stone pull it down here these are things we can build with in here we have some shit in that we can't use we have different things we need to place the totem at some point um, we have the option to make ladder and a hatch what I'm going to do very soon is show you how I think it is a good way to uh, to make uh, the shelter for uh, for the house here but a small ninja trick that I learned very early in this game uh, is you have this mana up here and um, you have a spell called the town portal what you can do with this town portal is that you can your, your dwarves can move from anywhere to the stockpile so if we place the town portal down here now we're using all the mana that we can that's because each time you gain a level you actually get more mana so it's going to refill very very soon meaning that it's just going to be wasted if we don't use it for anything at all so right now we're just spending this mana so that our dwarves can move quickly in the, in the area here we now have five of these earth things and that's pretty nice we're gonna grab this dwarf again then we're going to start working on our shelter so I'm pretty happy about having the shelter here I'm going to go underground for the shelter and that's uh, for safety reasons really uh, it's going to take longer time for uh, the bad guys to come attack us if we are underground in order to make a shelter there are some rules it's a shelter if it has walls on all sides and if openings I mean you need to be able to get in and out are closed by a door or a hatch so you could see uh, before that we were able to craft a hatch we were able to make ladders those are things that we're going to need to make in order to make our shelter very nice for the dwarves to live in right now I'm just digging an earth tunnel down here and the reason why I'm doing that is um, because this is down here we're going to be living we're going to make this area safe for our dwarves to live in and we're also going to be grabbing this is iron this over here is coal these are amazing starting resources that we're going to want and our dwarves are just really working uh, on collecting these things right now um, and that's okay we're in no rush right now just need them to uh, really make sure we have everything we need in order to get started I could start crafting more advanced tools so this goes just a little faster and I probably should do that but my focus right now is to grab uh, just a little more depth for, uh, for the shelter just to keep the dwarves safer uh, it's a little uh, time consuming right now but it's very helpful in the long run uh, not to have the dwarves somewhere where they really get hurt so I am running into an amazing mine of, uh, <laughs> of iron right here which is uh, very unlike anything I've seen before so I'm digging more than I should because I just can't say no to this kind of resources um, but this starts to look like uh, a good end of it so um, very soon we're going to be setting up that shelter I could have shown you the fast way to make a shelter because I mean you probably want to get going started uh, fast okay got a new guy great so we can just fill up our town portal here with all the mana because we're going to be gaining a level again very soon so we have two dwarves walking around up there great stuff so we have a lot of earth now and um, that's very nice 
Just going to remove this sand. I'm going to show you uh, another trick for the sand uh, a little later because we can see we have some in the background here as well. But just digging uh, one line further down here, uh, come to think of it, I think. Yeah, I'm just going to keep doing it manually because it's really faster. But let's go and craft a stone pickaxe, really, because it's so much faster to use. And just as with. Uh, with the club you just really drag over the icons matching what is needed and then you can go craft this stuff you can see this is part of the basic tool making quest so once this bar has filled we're going to have completed that quest and this amount here is the amount we're going to fill it by crafting one of these and we're going to be making five so now we get to see the technology tree and this is going to show us how we can advance and get different technologies for the dwarves and right now it's not that important uh, five of these is important um, let's see one of these is important so that we can uh, close our shelter for the baddies and I'm not just going to make one I like having a lot of these. I'm going to make three to start with. You can see this is basic woodworking, also gaining a chunk of this each time. And uh, ladders are very nice uh, here as well for basic woodworking. The more you make of a single thing, the less it's going to like boost your uh, experience in it. You need to press the tech tree again. So Now we can make some furniture. We're going to need beds. Beds are the most important because a dwarf has to go to bed to sleep to regain health and every dwarf needs its own bed so we need a lot of these but um, we're gonna get it no worries um, what we can do now okay evil forces have found us again that's because I'm leveling too fast now prepare to beat back a wave of monsters so in 49 minutes we're going to have a wave of monsters coming this way that's okay I'm not worried about that. Right now my focus is uh, only the shelter. Because we need the shelter, we need the beds. We're under attack. We have two guys up there. One there. All is good. See, I mean, you're going to see low health if a dwarf is in danger and then you can do something about it. But as long as the guy can... Uh, Okay, so he managed to uh, do that on his own. Right now, the dwarves have a lot of things to do. I'm going to right click here and mark this entire area to be dug out. Uh, but not just here. I'm also going to do it on this level here. Then I'm going to do actually what I wanted to show you earlier. I'm going to grab the earth and click here and say replace sand. This means that a dwarf is going to come here and replace the sand with earth going to do the same here uh, with the rear iron ore first and after that the front if there are two iron ores one in the background one in the foreground you're going to get this option then you want to replace the rear first so that you can see that you have iron ore still that uh, needs to be replaced this is uh, not something you absolutely need to do when you start the game but um, I think it's really nice to uh, to have this stuff taken care of so that you really have whatever resources uh, that are available to you also with the coal then I'm going to build up here two additional earth meaning that I'm going to be getting a wall just like I have there I'm going to pop a hatch here so that evil minions creatures can't come in and then I'm going to pop ladders like so. Once that has been taken care of, I would like my dwarfs to put down some uh, torches for light and that is because if there is no light they are going to start uh, bad things are going to be attracted to the area. Uh, there are actually some <coughs> cave spirits that are going to be created there if there is all darkness. We're going to have snails and it's going to be nasty one wood one resin from the pine trees and you make a torch you get four each time just going to complete the basic illuminating quest doing nothing than this and uh, then we have our torches so that is very nice they are very good to have 
and you don't want to be uh, saving these uh, you you just really want to pop them uh, pretty much everywhere I think uh, it's it's very important that you have light wherever your characters are this down here is a shelter once this has been placed and um, I'm going to place it somewhere in the middle uh, a shelter is anywhere within the range of a totem that has walls and doors and within that area you can place beds for your dwarves you can place different kinds of machines and workshops that are going to allow your dwarves to make more advanced things in the future and we're going to be doing that stuff very soon um, whoops that was not the plan like so just need to keep focus on uh, removing the vegetation up here because I just used all of the wood that we had great leveling up again very nice getting a new dwarf meaning that we are low on clubs of course since uh, kind of just got rid of them whenever you place a portal you can just place another portal in it and then you increase the the time that the portal is going to be there whenever a dwarf uses the portal it's going to reduce this time so what I would really like my dwarves to do they would be so kind to pay attention is uh, to go down here and uh, remove this stuff so that I can make the shelter ready so it's almost ready, but not entirely. Uh, book there. All good. So now it's night time again, so let's just make sure that every one of our dwarves has at least a club. Should we make a wooden helmet for them? Why not? It adds a little armor, meaning that they can uh, take more damage. And that's pretty much it. But it's a basic armor thing that you need to complete as well and the other options require strings that we don't have so it's a very nice thing to make for your dwarves these um, wooden helmets here goody goody you can see I actually got a hatch there by completing that quest so I didn't really need to make one myself I could just have gone with whatever was there um, and waited for the quest to complete so several things need to remember to use the stone pickaxes give them you can double click you can also drag if you want to down to here um, but what I wanted to show you is that these dwarves have standard equipment like this when they arrive uh, and before I talk about this I'm gonna grab this guy here he has almost no health and you can click him here to take him then grab control so I really want to make sure this guy doesn't die when uh, we're going to be seeing the nightly attack with the little zombie because he's been doing his uh, his part of the work already so I'm just going to use him to dig in here and uh, make sure that I get that totem placed so that he can get a bed to sleep in because he deserves it he's been working hard the gold coins that fall every once in a while are a special currency that you can use to buy any type of item from a grunt shop that uh, we're going to see shortly. I use it very late game. Uh, why? Because items as such are not hard to come by, really, but uh, some of the late games one are pretty nasty. So gonna place the totem right here in the middle now we have a shelter the house is complete the quest is complete and we're going to see small stars here that are going to mark the area that counts as our shelter most important for us to place beds and they're going to be placed very close to the ladder so that people can uh, come down from a battle and go to sleep pretty much right away these are nasty small creatures that actually also want to damage us so uh, we're going to be fighting them once we're done with uh, the nightly fight I'm going to re tell this guy to go to sleep you see now he's going to sleep he's going to go over to the bed lay down and start regenerating his health this takes time and this thing here your idol indicates how comfortable your 
little shelter is, the more comfortable it is, the faster the sleeping time. So you want to keep your shelter as comfortable as possible in order to reduce the time it takes for your dwarves to regain health after a battle. That is uh, super important. So let's just get this coal replaced here as well. So, very nice. Mark a few more of these to be cut down. So we're in a pretty sweet spot here. We have uh, trees growing right next to where we live. We always do that, really. We have... Um, this is bad, on the other hand. So we're going to tell the dwarves to go home here because we have goblins coming. And then we're going to go to this hatch and close it. With the hatch closed, these are going to go home. They actually come to raid our stockpile. But as soon as you close the hatch to your shelter, they're going to go away. But they are a major problem because they are going to be a constant threat to our shelter. And we need to deal with them. And it's a lot of goblins here. And um, we need to take them out. But we can't do it now. It's like no chance. So we're going to open up here and check out our new task. We have basic iron working. Cut down 30 trees. Collect coal. Already doing that. We have the basic armory. Collect sand on that. Basic furnishing, also doing that. But let's go look at these goblins here. Uh, where do we have them? Here we are. These treacherous thieves build their encampment near the dwarf's shelter as soon as the dwarves have collected enough valuable items. Then they wait for the dwarves to leave their stockpile unguarded, build temporary ladders to enter the shelter and try to steal every useful item and bring it back to their camp. Destroying their camp will get you lots of useful things, and that's true. You can often get things that are far more advanced than what you can make yourself by raiding this building here, but you do need to take out each and every one of these nasty goblins first. And these goblins are the only real threat in this game, I think, uh, when playing normal. So uh, it's definitely something you need to take seriously. Um, and they can make ladders that are like instant deploy and really can get you and as you can see there are like seven eight of them and uh, we have five dwarves with uh, with clubs but we really got them at bay just by closing down for our shelter and we have our, t our portal here that's going to allow our dwarves to go in and out so right now they're pretty much just waiting for us to open up to our shelter so that they can loot our stockpile. Yeah, sounds strange, but it's true. So we're safe from them right now, even though we we shouldn't be, but uh, we are. They m they they're going to be dropping by uh, anyway at some point. But uh, for now, we're in a pretty good position, so we're just going to uh, to really enjoy that. So what I want to do right here is to dig down here and into these things. We're going to be battling them, but uh, this is part of uh, really making our shelter larger so that we can place new types of uh, machines and stuff down here, and it's, it's all going to happen. Just going to place a hatch here. We're going to be placing ladders so that our d because the dwarves fall down, they get hurt, and it's bad. So you want to have some kind of uh, good navigation option for your dwarves in your shelter. What we have down here, you can see it's uh, pretty classic when you have a hole underground like this, then there are ants down here and they are super aggressive and they respawn almost instantly. And they have a nest. Once you clear the nest completely, they die. So you don't go down there unless you can take out the entire nest at once. So you need to have well-equipped dwarves that are ready to, uh, to go down and really uh, do whatever is needed to, uh, to clear the entire nest. And we're not really ready for that yet. Not at all. So dwarves are working. Everything is good. We're going to be uh, making sure that we have all the resources in the area. Clicking on this one to be attacked is going to tell every dwarf to charge towards it and attack it. 
if they see it, they're just going to attack it. But marking it to be attacked is going to give it the attention of uh, almost every dwarf <laughs> in the area. So that is a very effective way to make sure that you don't have one bad thing getting uh, allowed to really just hit on uh, on one dwarf because often they're going to be to be stronger than you. So let's see. There we had a guy falling. So what I want to do here is start cleaning the mess that we made. Uh, because I never intended this to be empty. I just wanted really to get uh, the starting stuff going. So we're going to be placing earth in these holes now. And that's super cool. Going to start gathering from the very early stage of the game these weird mushrooms and crystals that grow everywhere underground because we need them for alchemy in, uh, in the late game so it's uh, super cool if you can uh, if you can start picking up this stuff uh, at this point of the game already because depending on your play style and how you want to win the game you could really run low on this stuff so um, and I do like my magic potions so I'm definitely uh, keeping my focus on that stuff going to dig on here this way for more iron and really just here as well to uh, to have another passage where we have railroads and stuff like that we can make in the future and uh, we definitely want to do that we have five dwarves just just one sack down here by the bed meaning that only one dwarf has needed a bed so far and there's no reason to make beds for uh, for more I mean if you have an empty bed don't build more beds uh, because it's, it's the amount of beds you have have an impact on the comfort level of your your shelter so if you if you can have less beds than dwarves it's it's good at least in the early game where very little is going on uh, compared to to the late game and you can easily keep track of, um, of how the game is uh, is moving along so marking out this area here just placing a ladder so that the dwarves have something to stand on just really continuing this entire uh, way of building two holes one floor and uh, exploring while building this way and uh, that's really uh, a style I have been going with throughout almost every game I've played and it is uh, super effective for me you can see I have too little light now, meaning that uh, these different uh, like carnivorous plant style things are going to be spawning. So I'm going to be uh, placing more light there right away. So I would really like someone to come down here and collect these resources. If I close the hole now, the resources are going to be left behind whatever block I put there. So I would like to get that stuff sorted before I uh, I close the hole. So let's see where we are. We have a sheep there, that's very nice. We're going to kill it, it's going to give us meat and it is going to give us wool. And um, this stuff here is now ripe for harvest, meaning that we can start gathering that as well. There is unfortunately too much water here for us to do it, so we're just going to have to wait. Great stuff. We have now completed that task as well. This sheep here has no wool on it. It was dying and that's a bad thing. We want the wool. The meat is really not that important but the wool is super important. So uh, it's a complete no-go to take down a sheep before uh, being able to uh, benefit from the wool it has. So, dwarf number six. So far so good and um, what I want to do now is uh, close up the hole here and the reason for that is that um, I don't want things to come from here I have a very 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 nice tall mountain over here that is going to be uh, very annoying for the monsters uh, to pass when they're coming to visit us so I only really have the goblins from that side so I see no reason to make it too easy to come in over here see now they're uh, really thinking about doing the attack because I have the other guys coming as well that's okay they can just come we have nothing that uh, it would be bad to lose really so uh, they can just 
can't do their worst really. Really just want to lose this guy, but he's both drowning and fighting, so I'm going to select him and control him and see if I can get away. I couldn't. I was too slow there. That was really annoying. Um, losing a dwarf means nothing, truly. Uh, you're going to get him back in five minutes when you're playing like this. I would have liked to keep him because I think it's a little sloppy to let them die in something as easy as this, but um, yeah, no, he's dead. May he rest in peace. But we can now actually harvest this, so that's good. So I am going to do the same here as I did before, which is placing a ladder so that I can place a hatch up here and provide another closed option for... Uh, the baddies need to remove this in order to get below it, so uh, having a hatch is going to delay any force that wants to uh, to drop by our little shelter to pick on the dwarves, so that's good. The bushes give berries, berries means food, and the dwarves are going to be getting hungry. The more they work, the more hungry they get, and um, food is placed on tables that we haven't made yet. I haven't been crafting that much, but it I mean it's no biggie because crafting in uh, this part of the game is pretty much just uh, clicking. Later in the game we're going to have dwarfs standing on machines doing uh, labor so to say, but right now it is uh, it's a very uh, player defined thing. So uh, Dig means uh, do something with whatever is there. Remove torch is not what we wanted. So I'm not sure how it could grow there when we have a light source, but uh, it may have jumped to the to the spot before. So let's pick that up. Pop down light here, here. So we are pretty much ready now uh, to move forward. And I'm very happy about that because nothing has been going on so far really. Um, we have the shelter set up, we're pretty uh, pretty safe down here. Um, we have six dwarfs and uh, we need to start uh, moving a little forward with our technology. So, completed the illumination, completed the basic woodworking. We have some uh, things in here. Basic tool making was completed. Uh, the armor is an issue, and we could make these wooden armor, but they require strings, rope that is made from wool, and we don't really have that much rope, and we really don't want to waste it on this. So we're going to have to complete this by uh, by really making more of these than we need, like so. Good times. That's a way. Going to be making a few tables. Um, Tables, as I said before, are used for food. You don't need that many tables for food, but you need tables to make workbenches. And um, if you've been playing Minecraft, other games like that, you know that's just a must have. So that completed basic furnishing, leaving us with um, a pretty decent situation here where we can just move forward and make a pot and planks once we have this workbench came here, ninja, we need the workbench before we can make the pot and the nails and the planks, and from the workbench point we're going to be having a dwarf standing by the workbench, that's the carpenting skill and making all these things. The workbench requires a wooden table, additional wood and a little iron, and these are resources that we have been farming very well. We're going to make four of them. Um, not because I need four, but because they are absolutely a core part of, uh, of the game. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to continue really with uh, one there, and then I'm going to pop the next town portal here. And this is going to be like uh, the working level, or whatever you would call it. But before we do any of that, we're going to be replacing this coal here, so that we're just sure that we are up to date on the resources that are available. We're going to be 
putting this hole together. Great stuff. So, workbench. Seems logical to uh, pretty much start one end there. Pop one there. Can't make one there until we fill the hole. So, let's remove the ladder. Tables. Just going to pop them in between the beds. Makes good sense because you can't put beds right next to each other, but you can put a table in between. So that's pretty nice. Great. Just gonna pop down these torches while we remember it as well. I could be grabbing a dwarf and controlling him to do all this stuff here. Uh, it's faster, but uh, I'm starting to have so many tasks going on at one time that I'm going to be mm, spending more and more time on assigning the tasks uh, than I'm going to be spending time on, on doing them myself. And then at some point I'm going to have so many things planned out into the future see now this one has wool, that uh, I'm going to be controlling a dwarf and uh, really doing things the old fashioned way again. So now we're going to close off here and replace these. Great stuff. So we can remove this now and start placing our workbench again. So Ready. We now have a workbench, meaning that we can make planks. Um, and we're going to do that, but we're going to make a few pots first. These are needed for cooking, the more advanced version of it. And I'm just going to make five. Um, I'm going to make buckets. These require the planks and nails, and uh, buckets are super important because water is a crazy resource uh, that you absolutely need to pay attention to. You need to start hoarding in water as soon as you can in the game because you need water for so many things. Uh, makes good sense, but uh, it's just not as, as easy to come by as you might think. So I'm going to be making uh, four of these and um, I'm going to be placing these cooking areas in between these if I can. No, I can't. Super. Not that I wanted to. Pretty great. As you can see, we're still pretty safe from the goblins. They're over there. They want to attack us. They want to steal this stuff. But <laughs> because we have closed our hatch, they're not going to be coming. So that is super amazing. Um, this place is going to be all pretty much all tables and beds um, and we're going to have the workbenches down here but I think that I'm just going to start placing these here like so so that we can start working on food as well Great. Warrior plus one. That means that that dwarf is now dealing more damage in close combat. That's what warrior means. Uh, so, let's see. Another workbench there. Not sure if this is too close, but uh, we'll know soon enough. So, with those on the way down, I'm going to be making planks because we need them for a lot of advanced woodworking stuff but uh, right now we need it to make buckets and we want we want a lot of this so we're just really going to go all in with it and we're going to want nails and we're going to need quite a bit of those as well so just going to make some decent batch like that goody so new task farming Good times, make some food, do the cooking stuff, basic construction, advanced woodworking, some very nice good quests here that we can uh, start working on right away. And um, let's look into the cooking to start with here because we have the other stuff going on. This is food. The dwarves can eat apples, they can eat cones, they can eat berries. Grilled meat is food we need to cook, it takes a leaf, that's a meat and a coal and then you make 
another dish out of it and um, it's pretty much a waste but I'm just going to do it now like so fried eggs takes an egg that we don't have mixed green salads that's what you want and take your apple you want to take your leaves that you can't eat and then you want to combine them into a better meal like that just going to go all in crazy pants on that stuff and then we're going to put it on the tables so I could just have done this but uh, it's not good enough I don't think so dwarves can start out by eating just a single type of food but they uh, get tired of it and then they want variety so try to put as many different types of food down there as possible as um, you get further into the game you're going to be getting some types of uh, you're going to be getting tea and beer that make the dwarves work uh, better or move faster so um, that's definitely also things that you uh, that you can keep in mind with this stuff so I can see that I placed these all wrong really compared to what I wanted but um, yeah that's okay still have uh, I have now a spare bed uh, but nobody's occupying these so there's really no reason to to place them down um, need to make sure that I get these that these trees are going down just so that I get all these nice resources goody farming completed so now we got another totem what does that mean well it means that we can make another shelter it means that we can have a, a larger safe area for the dwarves right now our safe area is here so I want to expand to the side to start with and really make uh, our dwarves feel safer in a larger space. Could also go further down, um, that's also a pretty cool way to do it but for now, right now I'm just going to the side really. Completed advanced woodworking because we have been making planks, that is also a happy day thing. Um, so what else is there to say really about the start of the game? Uh, I have so much more that I want to show you guys. We're just getting the absolute basics, the basics of the basics uh, in place here. Um, but once these things are rolling, the game gets so much easier and you can start focusing on more things uh, that are a little more fun, progression, hunting, uh, the goblin, stuff like that. Right now it's uh, pretty survival based. Uh, but it gets uh, you can really change that and turn the game into a hunt once you get a little further into it we have now made uh, resources that are going to allow us to make a bucket and um, buckets are important uh, they're important because you need them to gather water and you need to gather water for all sorts of crazy things so we're making 15 buckets which is uh, way too much um, I just like having them. Uh, you can have one dwarf gathering water for each bucket you have. <coughs> we have seven dwarves, so why? Why would I uh, make 15 buckets? Just because. It's, um, it's training for the dwarves, let's just say that. They are coming. A portal will open soon and monsters will pour out of it to attack you. Check your dwarves' weapons and health. That's right, we have the monster portal coming now. And uh, what we can do now is hit the equip bar and make sure that everybody has a wooden helmet and a club. If they have low health, we can send them to bed. This guy, two health, it's okay, two health, it's okay. This guy has no club. He has no wooden helmet. That's bad. This guy, well taken care of. This guy, not so much. Goody this guy again nothing so right before the monster portal you can instantly equip your dwarves and make sure that they are ready for battle you can see their health you can see their hunger if uh, you want to like check them out more you can click on the small gem thing here and go to control them move them into safety that's one thing you can do you can also click here and tell your dwarves to go into the shelter then they're just going to go home and wait they're going to be working on things down here while the monsters appear 
and just not go outside the, the baddies are then doing, going to come here and attack through here walk over here go down here and start hitting on things but uh, that's pretty much it so monster portal opened over here by the goblins and um, I think uh, dealing with this is going to be a great way to start the second video here in my craft the world series so uh, if that sounds uh, interesting for you please do uh, check it out once uh, it comes around thank you very much for watching